the global south in difficult contexts, and we're always, 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 always in need of translators. Um, so if you get in contact with me, we need a lot of common languages as well as uncommon languages, Mongolian, Nepali, anybody who speak these, come talk to me. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everyone. Um, and next up, we have Frack Tracker. started. Um, my name is Kyle Farrar. I'm the Western uh, Program Coordinator for the Frack Tracker Alliance. Um, my background is in environmental health and toxicology. I'm a doctoral candidate at the University of Pittsburgh, so uh, where I've been researching oil and gas and other types of fossil fuel extraction activities for the past 10 years. So, um, Frack Tracker has developed a mobile app. Um, we were a platform that was originally developed uh, to crowdsource data focused on fracking on the East Coast, um, but really all types of oil and gas drilling. Um, when, we were when we developed the uh, platform in around 2010, there just wasn't any data to, to do our own research. Um, regulatory agencies weren't publishing it, so uh, we felt the need um, to really work with communities and crowdsource a lot of data. Now that a lot of regulatory agencies have been responsive to the requests for data uh, and they understood that you know it makes a lot of sense to monitor these activities and to publish this data uh, freely on the internet. Um, we've been able to move more into research. Um, at the same time, we understand that there's a lot of uh, both qualitative and quantitative information that's out there that isn't published uh, publicly through regulatory agencies or through other groups working with other partners. It's just hard to get. Um, so we've seen the need to continue to work, in, uh, to continue to work on the ground uh, with communities um, doing community-based participatory research. Um, so to pretty much continue to crowdsource this type of information, we developed a mobile app, and we are on our second iteration now. Um, uh, the app is unique in that it overlays all oil and gas drilling that's happening across the United States. Um, on your mobile app, it uses the Esri mobile platform, um, and it allows you to see where the maps are, uh, the home screen here in a second. Uh, okay. um, first, the home screen brings you into wherever your location is, um, just like Google Maps or anything, uh, or any other type of uh, GIS app software. Uh, and uh, in the zoomed out view, it shows you really the relative density of oil and gas drilling that's happening um, by county in your region. Um, from there, you can zoom in, uh, specifically see where oil and gas wells are uh, have been drilled and where extraction activity is occurring. And it allows you to uh, drop pins and identify um, issues of contamination, uh, any type of uh, any type of event that you want to identify as um, impacting your life or just uh, bring up general issues. Uh, you can uh, drop a flag and um, list the details of what's happening, and other people can see that. Um, and it also allows you to upload oil and gas photos to document cases of, of impacts. Thank you. So uh, the start screen is pretty easy. All we ask is for a name and email. Um, this can be a throwaway account, so you don't have to. Uh, so love to talk more about encryption issues. Yeah. Uh, uh, here's an example of uh, of a map that you might see. Um, you're on the ground, and the different colors obviously represent different uh, different. Uh, types of oil and gas wells, whether they're fracked wells or non fracked wells, but also other types of infrastructure. Um, you can identify uh, the information at a specific site, and then uh, as well as uh, use the legend to pretty much see what you're looking at. Um, and then you can submit a report. You can say that, oh, I'm seeing um, water contamination impacts that are occurring here. And you can go through, identify the facility type. You can uh, fill in as much information here or as little information here as you want. Um, and then you upload a picture. And this is a, the current state of our app, but um, coming out with a new version here in July that's going to uh, allow for um, 
pretty much more descriptions uh, as well as more categorizations of what you're seeing. And so we're not only using just this just for wells, but for all types of infrastructure that's, uh, that um, is occurring that supports or, uh, fossil fuel extraction activities. Um, the next step after July will be to uh, make it more um, user specific. With an RSS feed, um, you can create unique maps um, to facilitate work that's happening within a uh, small community group, uh, a local nonprofit. Um, if you want to focus on something specific, such as uh, oil refineries or um, impacts to a specific uh, national park, you can do that. You can create your own projects, have your own subsets, use hashtags to, uh, to um, make subsets of the data. Uh, and here's an example. Uh, we, did a, uh, we did a study in uh, a national park, and we were able to identify view sheds um, that were important and where the oil and gas uh, drilling was happening through those view sheds. Um, so here's just a little bit of back end. Uh, we moderate all the data, um, but really we want to have local administrators working uh, with the data and managing local projects. So, thank you so much. Any questions? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, the question was, can this app be used in other settings besides maybe fossil fuel extraction to um, maybe alert communities of an issue, such as the Lisa Canyon uh, Natural Gas uh, Leak or the Flint, Michigan water contamination issue? And absolutely, we're actually working with groups in the East Bay, the north coast of the East Bay, uh, we call it the Refinery Corridor. There are uh, five refineries in this area. Uh, as well as a number of power stations that pretty much power the entire uh, Bay Area. And um, it's been called a sacrifice zone. Uh, and it's our neighbors, just right up the road. So we're working with communities there that are able to identify uh, days where there's exceptionally bad air quality um, so that they can, one, alert health departments of potential issues at refineries if they smell sulfur and other things that, uh, or other types of air contaminants of that nature. Um, but it can absolutely be used on the ground by groups to identify all types of environmental impacts, uh, whether they're fossil fuel related or not, um, and have pretty much an anonymous way to throw up a flag that says, hey, this is an issue. Um, it, there's some type of contamination. There might be exposure hazards that are associated with it. So uh, this needs to be brought uh, to everyone's attention in the community. Can I just quickly say that you might not even know you've been affected until suddenly your eyes start itching, maybe you're vomiting. And so if you get clusters of that, you can have health effects before you even notice anything's happening. Absolutely. Um, so it can be used as an early warning signal as a flare. Um, some type of alert system that says, uh, hey, before you continue with this activity, whether it's drinking your tap water uh, or, some, or something similar, going outside, letting your kids play outside on a certain day, um, it's really important to um, alert your neighbors, your community, and everyone around you. Any last questions? Oh, one more quick one. Oh, yes. Yeah, so the app in its current state uh, is running very well. Um, I would encourage you all to take a walk through California. We had uh, and uh, use the app and document the oil and gas activity that you see. That would be fantastic. Or to get on the website and um, uh, the demo is here for the new app. Um, you can take a look at uh, the new features, but while you're walking in California, there's 230,000 wells in California that have been drilled for oil and gas activity. Over 75,000 uh, of them are actively producing oil and gas. Um, you'll see them even in Wildcat Canyon, right, uh, in the East Bay. So um, when you're walking, um, yeah, I would love you to download it and maybe use it and just share your impacts. Great. Thanks, Thanks so much. And uh, will you be with us afterwards? Great, so he'll be here for more questions. Okay, next up we have Concern. There they are coming up. Uh, and I just wanted to mention uh, that we will also be sharing all of these links out as a wrap-up email afterwards. So we'll be, uh, we'll be capturing these notes. 
and links uh, so you don't have to frantically scribble them all down. Otherwise, after. <laughs> um, where would I find our 